the Sumi Shades video if you had a beautiful day. Hashtag Team All Blade, hashtag No Blade Left Behind, guys. You know how we do it here, squad goals. All I have to say is happy Father's Day and Father's Day of the Lather Games, guys. This is Father's Day Challenge Episode 19. I'm shocked. I was sitting here this morning. I was like, we're 19 freaking film episodes into this thing. And I just... It's been a ride, it's been wild, it's been fun, and I'm really thankful and, and very appreciative of everybody that's shown up, clicked in, and joined, and been part of this, and really shown support, and, and uh, really been enthusiastic and positive. Thank you guys so much. I am absolutely overjoyed. I have loved the experience, and honestly, even though I'm a little bit tired, a little bit tired, guys, because I'm getting up at like 4 and 5 every morning to film these, right? And get them all edited and put together for so they can go to YouTube. It's been an awesome ride. It's been really cool and really fun. And today, again, it's Father's Day. And I want to just shout out to all the fathers out there, to the shave dad, you know. You, you may have more than just your biological father that's your father figure or somebody you really admire and appreciate. And that's what today's about, right? So shout out to the shave dad, to the shave uncle, to the guys older than me that are showing me the craft. I really appreciate those guys, right? The fathers of our craft, right? The fathers of our uh, our shave adventure, you could say, right? I'm really appreciative. And honestly, shout out to the guys that are actual fathers on today. So hopefully you guys have beautiful, wonderful Father's Day. It's sunny. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day on the East Coast. Wherever you are, I hope wherever you're tuning in from, I hope your day is phenomenal and awesome and enjoyable. Today, guys, because it is the hashtag Father's Day Challenge over on Lather Games on Reddit, right? The Shave Olympics, you could say. Today, we're gonna, we have to use gear that is older than us, right? That predates us, that it was made or formulated before us. Guys, honestly, I've got a rocket, even though the company's now gone. My beautiful wife did the design here, guys. I could not, I'm not that artistic. She did the Williams Shave Mug design on a cute little tub for me. And let's check this out. Look, it fits so perfectly in there. And what I do, guys, I grab some scissors and I just cut off a little bit and it turns into like little like gritty things. I can put a picture here. It turns into little like uh, shards. And then I soak the shards and then mash them down and then I bowl lather those. That tends to work the best for me with the Williams Shave Mug soap. I've got it pre-lathered here using my Mountain Hair Shaving Brush. And again, this is... The Shave Dad's company, guys. Shave Dad's company. And he turns these brushes and he started from literally just like, I want to try this out to what he's doing now, guys. And the brushes are absolutely beautiful. This is the William Shave Mug Soap. I'm, I'm, I get really good lather with it. My problem is finding the right soap amount because I'm using scissors. When I dial it in, when I'm cutting my soap apart and putting it together, guys, for me, what, what ends up happening is I get like too much soap. Look, look at this. And for all you guys out there, it's like, oh, there's no way, guys. Look at this. It, it's actual soap. There's nothing else in there but soap. This is just soap, guys. Look at this. It's wild, right? And it is thick. It is very, very luxurious. And my only other qualm with Williams, other than it's gone now, guys, that's kind of sad, right? It smells really nice. The problem is the smell doesn't last for me, right? The smell is like one of those ones that you use it and it's gone. And I thought Williams made a really good smell. I would like to see Doug maybe release, you know, PAA, because he likes to release, like, scents. I would like to see if Doug can redo uh, Williams Shea Bug Soap, now it's gone, and make it, like, that scent. It's a really nice scent, but it goes away so fast. I'd like to see that scent come back and maybe in a splash format, something like that. I think it'd be really cool um, and do it in a, in a scent that we could actually like wear during the day. I love, I think that scent's really nice. Very clean scent, guys. It's different than a barbershop to me. It's just very, very clean, and I like that scent. No, no, it could be just me, but really nice. And we're using the PAA Scuttle, the lather that, guys. Today, we're going to be rocking on top of that with Cat of Nine Tells. This is a very cinnamon forward scent by Captain's Choice. Very, very cinnamon, fiery scent, guys. Fiery scent. Burns your skin almost. I mean, it's fiery. Like, you put it on and it's like burning, like, it is intentionally hot, right? And they're going on top of that with Talm Suck, Talm Sauk, Talm something. And it's a uh, Chantilly Lux scent, guys, that the Shave Dad sent over to me. Again, another one of those things. Just want to use stuff that I was sent and I really appreciate by people that um, showed me the craft and really, um, it really brought me in and, right, like, uh, I just I want to have a moment of appreciation for the things that I've received um, from people that have shown me things. So I really appreciate that. And we're going to be using, again, the single ring Gillette razor. Not only does this razor predate most of the stuff I own. This is a 1920 uh, or 20s. It's an unstamped, undated, thin cap model, guys. I believe it's a 20s model from all the information and research I could do. 
beautiful. Look, I mean, just look at the finish on this. Absolutely stunning. And today we're rocking it with some injector blades. Guys, I've not done this. I don't believe, I was going through my videos, I could not find anything. I don't believe I've ever done this, and I've always wanted to. So today, we're gonna put a Schick injector in the 1920s single ring, thin cap uh, Gillette, guys. This is a three-piece razor that has a tube and a screw adjustment knob down here, and it all goes together, and usually use a DE razor blade, but today, it's a razor that, it, I just wanted, I wanted to throw a Schick injector in there, because, you know, people mention they feel like this has too much exposure, they get rough rides. I don't, I love this razor, guys, with a DE blade. I call it the heavyweight shaver in my den, because it's such a good shave. But today, I want to see if we put a single uh, a Schick injector in there, how will it shave? Will it shave close? Will it shave effectively and will it shave comfortably? I have good feelings that with blade exposure and a rigid blade that's held in place, we'll get a good shave, but we'll find out, right? Let's get it done, guys. I've got 30, uh, 24 hours of growth, just 24 hours today. I am right at that same place we shaved yesterday, time-wise, because I have like, you know, Father's Day stuff. I think all of us are doing crazy things for Father's Day. All of us have plans. Everybody's out doing their stuff. Man, that is a smooth ride. This is just so nice, dang. And this again came from my buddy Tarl. And Tarl, is, as I've referred to him, as like the sh the cool shave uncle, right? He's the kind of guy that was like, have you seen this, have you tried this? He's the kind of guy that like, you, you would get you into trouble, right? He, he's like the kind of guy, if you would, you, as a kid, you would go out swimming in the, in the, in the, um, the ravine with, right? And you're not supposed to, but your, your cousins and uncles are gonna go do it, so you, you must be fine. I, I don't know, he's a really cool guy and I really appreciate him and him showing me so many things in the craft. And this razor came from him, so I am using it today in kind of a another ins inspiration, but also because I wanted to try it with an injector blade. I will say this, guys, the blade fill goes down about 90%. This has like almost no blade fill. It, it's the same blade fill as the Tech. Honestly, this has zero blade fill. I, I'm surprised, I, can't, I keep checking to make sure I'm out of the blade side forward. Because it's very, very, very mild. You could load two blades in there if you wanted to and do a double-sided um, injector on it. I am not today. I am uh, using a single side, guys. Single side. Wow, that is nice. Guys, this is smooth, man. Wow. And I want to mention here, I got a couple comments when I used this last time. People said, hold on, when did they produce the gold single ring that looked like that? And I said, no, 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 no. This is not a gold a razor at all. This is brass that is just highly, highly, highly taken care of. It is polished meticulously and um, always looked after, guys. This is a razor that I meticulously polish and ensure it receives um, proper care, right? It's one that I really do admire and appreciate, just the workmanship and the craftsmanship and honestly the friendship that it came from. And so I take really good care of it. It is not a gold razor. This is an unplated brassed fully and then polished um, 1912 or 1920s single ring. Really nice. And again, people have reached out to me and said, I can't get a good shave with that razor. I don't care what you do. It doesn't shave good for me. Guys, this is another one of those workarounds if you're having that problem with your single ring. If you just feel like it has too much blade exposure or too much blade fill on the skin, this is going to reduce that blade fill 100%. At least 100%, guys. Honestly, this... It shaves really close. I mean, I'm actually really impressed with how close this is shaving for as little blade fills I'm getting. It's wild, guys. I would not say this is witchcraft at all, right? It's just putting a Schick injector blade inside of a 1920s, really just a single ring in general. This will work for all single rings and single ring clones, of course. There's really no audible... Um, audible noise to it as you're shaving too. Check this out, guys. Check this out. We are knocking it down. Look at this. Look at that. I mean, it's it's, it's efficient. It's really efficient. I mean, surprisingly efficient for as little blade fill as I'm getting. And I'm getting plenty of that residual slickness from the Williams, which I like. I don't know if anybody else feels like this with Williams, but it does have a little bit of a drying effect on the post shave. I do have a little bit of a more drying effect. And it doesn't really matter because Williams is now decommissioned, right? It's kind of sad. I know a lot of people bought a bunch. I have a f couple friends and associates that bought a lot of Williams before, as it was closing down, right? So if you find it in the store, just know that that's no, I'd pick it up because it's no longer available, guys. It's so sad, but 
no longer going to be available. And it was a really, really good bargain. In my opinion, it was a bargain shave soap for, that you could get locally usually. Really good shave soap that you could get locally. Um, today, guys, as another part of the challenge, we were given the challenge to talk and tell a story, an interesting story about our fathers. I wanted to hear if you guys had a fun story in the you could share in the comments. Keep in mind, you will be sharing it in comments, guys, um, about your fathers or people that you admire. We can even do it for people you just appreciate. Any funny, interesting stories? Um, I will give you one. I will give you one. It is with my father-in-law, guys. Not my father. We're going to do my father-in-law. I had a, a, a moment with my father-in-law where we were doing a party. They brought me out. You know, you know we were having this party, and I, I got told, you know, I was supposed to go outside. So I go outside, and they were hitting golf balls, right? They had one set up for me, and I thought, oh, I get this moment where I'm going to get it because it, it was at the time an empty backyard. There's nothing behind there. It's just like this empty everything, and you could just we were just hitting golf balls out. It was crazy, middle of nowhere, right? And we're just like, okay, we're going to hit a golf ball, and I was going to have this cool moment. Go and I go to hit it, and it was one of those disappearing, uh, like, like evaporating balls, guys. And I hit it, and I thought I was so strong that I had made this thing disappear. I hit it and I was like, oh, that's the first time I've ever seen one of those blow up like that. I must have, I must be amazing. And just like the sheer enjoyment that everybody got that I thought personally, that eh, tells you something, right? That tells you something. I was like, yes, I have destroyed a golf ball. That's got to go in a record book somewhere. No, that was just one of those disappearing ones. And then shortly after, I think it was on the same trip, guys, same trip. I was out, we were, he was just, uh, you know, kind of chipping around the backyard. And I was just hanging out with him. Keep in mind, my father-in-law is a very proficient, very good golfer. Very, very, very good golfer. He was just, you know, out chipping around, having a good time. And I went out to kind of hang out with him. And <laughs> he chipped the ball off the side of the, off the side of the club. And it hit me square in the head, right? Square darn in the head. And they thought that was the funniest thing they'd ever seen in their whole life. I thought I, was, I thought it had the ball come through my head, guys. I had this big like mark like this, and everybody's like, "Well, I wonder if the title this mark will show up." Right? <laughs> like, I mean, still to this day, we talk about the time I got hit in the head with a golf ball. Very, very, very amusing for some people, I guess. Um, another thing, I guess we I, I wanted to mention too is I had a old Camaro, right? Old Camaro, and my father, my real dad, right. And I had been working uh, on this house. And it was a really, really hot day. And I was just really forgetful. Was, I just remember it being really warm. Anyway, I I, leave, I go out. I, I run inside to help my dad. Come back outside. And I realize I have locked my keys in this old Camaro. Old, old Camaro. And I panic. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. There's a one set of, of keys for this car. And I'm the, the, the car does not do good in the heat in the first place. You know, it doesn't do great in the heat. What am I going to do? But I just, don't worry. Don't, I've got this figured out. It comes back like 10 minutes later and he has a wire hanger. I'll never forget this. I was like 16, a six. Okay. I was 17. I must've been 17. Um, he comes running outside with a wire hanger and Jimmy's my car guys, the window gets underneath, opens the door handle, opens the lock with the, with the, with the wire hanger, I'd never seen that before. And I understand like people that live in that era, that was a trick. I mean, that was something that you could do. It's something you, like it came tribal knowledge to the people that in that era. But to people like me that, you know, we're used to automated lock systems and stuff. We, yeah, no, I was an honest person. I had no idea. So I, I looked at my dad at the time. I was like, what in the world, man? What, what? how? And he just looked at me and goes, son, I was not always a saint. And I will never forget. I wasn't always a saint. I loved that. And I think my dad was probably just as forgetful as I was and learned how to get into his car if it was locked on accident. Very, very funny. I love that guy, right? Awesome dad. Awesome person. Somebody I definitely admire and appreciate. And I hope your guys' uh, Father's Day is right. You get to do the same. Even if it's not with a biological father, it could be a father-in-law. It could be somebody like the shave, the shave dad, you know, that showed you something new in the shave world, right? I really appreciate Jerms for always coming forward, right? He was the kind of guy that was like, you're good at doing this, this, this. You should do it. Like, he was the person that was like very, very forward with pushing like the ideas of let's see if you, if you do a channel talking about things that you do in your own shave den, how that'll do. Very positive person. And I really do appreciate Jerms um, and all the people that have been that kind of inspirational shave dad of sorts, right? I really do appreciate them. But guys, this is an awesome shave, man. Awesome shave. I will tell you this. 
It is BBS that was very, very mild natured, very easy going shaver. Honestly, I would, I like it with the DE blades. I really like it with the injector blades too. I mean, talking about why the Schick injector uh, blade really does work, guys. It really does. It just, it showcases how good a solid, firm blade can shave. There's zero fill to it and it is zero irritation. Like I can't, like I just want to rub my head. It feels nice. We're going to get on top of that with the Cat of Nine Tails. I have to be careful with this one, guys. It is hot and it is a fiery set. It's nice. It's like rubbing your head with a hot tamale, right? You ever had those candies, hot tamales? It's like rubbing your head with a hot tamale. I know this doesn't sound nice, but it feels pretty good. I will, I will say it feels pretty good. I, if you're adverse to cinnamon, like I sometimes am, be careful with it. We're going on top of that with Tam Sok, guys. Tam Sok, Tam something from Chantilly, and it smells so good. Oh, I love this scent. It's like this oaky, like spicy scent that's just so nice. Like I love this scent by by uh, Chantilly Lux. Beautiful, Jerems. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome shape. Fantastic with the Gillette single ring, with the single ring, with the injector blade. I hope that is interesting and exciting for you guys to see and to enjoy with me, guys. Happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Have a wonderful day with families. I'll catch you guys in the next CB Shades video. Soups out.